Hi, this is Dr. Ariel Waitsman from Dearborn Ear, Nose and Throat. Today we're going to talk about nosebleeds and we're going to do this as a, a two-part video. We're going to talk a little bit about the causes of nosebleeds and then in a separate one we're going to go over the treatment of nosebleeds. Nosebleeds, which are called epistaxis, is an extremely common condition, especially for ear, nose and throat doctors. It affects all ages. We get children, we get the elderly, and actually these are the two most common groups, but of course everyone in between can get a nosebleed. Some nosebleeds, the cause is obvious. It's trauma, it's getting punched in the nose, it's getting hit with a basketball or an elbow, but sometimes it'll start spontaneously and often at nighttime. There are numerous causes of nosebleeds. I'm not going to go over all of them, but we'll try to hit some of the highlights of the more common ones. Children often have blood vessels that are very close to the surface at the front of the nose. These blood vessels are very fragile, so if the child bumps their nose, rubs their nose, picks their nose, they will often start bleeding and sometimes the bleeding is quite heavy because of the caliber of these blood vessels. Most of the time there's nothing really wrong with the child, there's no big health issue, it's just the proximity of these blood vessels to the surface and it can be easily dealt with, but it can be scary and often it's a social issue because these kids tend to get nosebleeds at school or at birthday parties where it's a real embarrassment for them. In the elderly, the issue is more fragility of the blood vessels from age change. So just like you get heart disease from change of the blood vessels or you can get stroke from change of the blood vessels in the neck and head, the nose changes as well. And these blood vessels stiffen and if they crack then they will tend to bleed very easily and the bleeding won't stop easily because the blood vessels are so stiff. To make this more complicated, the elderly are often on medications that can increase the risk of bleeding. So there's a variety of medicines that can be a problem. The most common are blood thinner medicines such as aspirin, Coumadin and a host of others. These ones in themselves generally won't cause a nosebleed, but once a bleed gets going it can be much heavier than normal and it won't stop in the normal way. Other medicines that are a problem are ones that dry the tissue of the nose. And these are often allergy type medications such as antihistamines or allergy nose sprays, but there's also a long list of other medications people take for totally different ailments in the body that have a side effect that they dry the tissues of the nose and make it a higher risk. Nosebleeds for the most part, probably 90% of the time, are more of a minor inconvenience, but perhaps 10% of the time are a serious issue. People can hemorrhage from the nose and it can cause a serious blood loss. And some of these patients will need to be managed in the hospital. Simple things at home that you can do to reduce the chance of nosebleed if you're prone to this, or especially if you're on treatments or medicines that tend to dry the nose, is simple moisturizers for the nose that are safe and inexpensive. The two mainstays of this are using a saline nasal spray and there's many brands and there's many generic brands that are less expensive. The key thing with the saline nasal spray is it needs to be used frequently. It does a great job of moisturizing the nose and it allows protection of the tissue by this moisture effect but it doesn't last very long. Things that actually last longer than the saline spray are a saline gel that can either be squeezed in the nose or a thicker spray, or just simple Vaseline that can be put right in the front of the nose on a Q-tip or fingertip that forms a barrier. This is something that I like to use in patients overnight because obviously they're not going to wake up every few hours to spray their nose with saline, so during the day they will use a saline mist in the nose as frequently as they can and when they go to bed at night they'll apply a little bit of Vaseline to the front of the nose and this helps protect them during the overnight time. In the winter time especially it's also not a bad idea to run a humidifier in the room if dryness is a problem for you. So we talked a little bit about nosebleeds. I know we didn't get too in depth but it is a really common problem and I would encourage anyone who's getting recurrent nosebleeds to see an ear, nose and throat specialist. It's often something we can really deal with simply and no big invasive procedure and really make a big difference in people's lives. And that includes children and adults. So it's uh, been great for you to be watching us and uh, stay tuned and we're going to do a separate video that's more intense on the treatment of nosebleeds themselves. Mm -hmm.